grumpy old man here and boy am I grumpy. I want to spend some time to tell you about some experiences I had that I really didn't like on a cruise ship, but this is a pretty positive approach. I'm going to let you know what happened and I'll bet you the same things have happened to you and then what my solutions were. Now you might not like my solutions, but at least I thought it through. I acknowledge this is an issue and here's my solution. Let's start with number one, massive upselling on the cruise ships. Now I'm going to break the cruise ships down into the three categories, mainstream, premium, and luxury. Let's start with mainstream. Everything gets upsold. Whether it's a chef's table or spa treatments, God, I hate when spa treatments are upsold. They're already so expensive. Artwork, photography, and my personal pet peeve might not be yours, it is mine. All the stuff that's for sale in the room, half the time you don't even know it. And then at the end, you get this, this, this portfolio with this massive amounts for Coca-Colas of all things. I hate that. I hate massive upsells. So remember, you need to know what the rules are to the game with this program. Well, here's your rules. Number one, it's gonna happen. And when it happens, you have to have something to say. And I'm gonna give you something to say. Let's start with mainstream cruise brands because they're the notoriously. They're trying to upsell so they can make more money. You can't blame them, but you don't have to like it. You just have to know what's coming and how to handle it. Here's your line. I have no interest in that right now, but thank you. So now they come at you again. And you say, with a little bit more force, I have no interest in that right now, but thank you. Usually once, twice, maybe three times it's done. I just don't want you to be disappointed. It's good to happen. And when it happens, you've got something to say. Now, you would think that it's better on a premium cruise brand. It's not. They're just better at it. Now, I'm going to give you an example. I went on a premium cruise line. I was in a suite, fortunate enough, had a butler, had a lovely time, except when I went into the suites only restaurant, which by the way, was the best restaurant on the ship, period, but I'll talk about that later. I went up to the maitre d' and said, hey, tell me about the chef's table. 20 minutes later, couldn't shut this woman down. And finally, after saying to her, Thank you, but I have no interest at this time, but thank you. About three times she shut down until breakfast. She came at me again, then lunch, she came in. Finally, I had to get a little bit more forceful. Now, was I upset? No, I expected there to be upselling. I didn't expect it to be that much. It immediately gave me the sense that she makes a big commission on the chef's table. So I'm never gonna ask the question again. <laughs> I was just curious. That's all I was, was curious. Now, another thing that happened, and it happened to be also on a premium cruise line, but I'm gonna tell you, this happens on all the cruise lines, spa treatments. See, prior to the cruise, I got an email and it said, if you book three spa packages, and what I do is I do massages, if you do three, you get 20% off. I said, deal, I'm gonna do it anyway. So I got six, three massages for my wife, three for me. And I was very specific on the type of massages that I want. It was based on the day and the time and what we needed. And, well, when we get to the spa to get our first massage, upsell time. And man, they just won't let you go. I went there to relax, to get a massage. I didn't go there. They keep on saying, no, I'm not interested. No, I'm not interested. Thank you very much, but no, I'm not interested. It just got old. It shouldn't be that way. But I said those words. No, I have no interest in that at this time, but thank you. And again, for the most part, it works. Now in a luxury cruise line, Luxury cruise lines, it's different. For the most part, not so much upsells. I mean, they're there, the spa, but it's not quite the same thing. And I think it's because you pay more for it. Now, I've left something for last. One of the things that I hate, I mean, I really hate, pet peeve, hate, 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 is the for sale items in my room. Now, I don't have to worry about that on a luxury cruise line because it comes with it. It's part of the admission, kind of like that. I like it very much, but on premium and mainstream, I tell my butler, if you're so fortunate, 
or my room steward to get everything that's for sale out of the room. Just get it out. And they accommodate me because I don't think I'm the only one that makes that request. Now I have an open refrigerator and if we buy a bottle of wine, we got a place to put it. If we have some extra fruit and we want to save it, we got a place to put it. We have an open refrigerator. Sounds like a plan, doesn't it? You see, there's a solution to all these things. My solution is simple. Know what's going to happen. Know what the rules are to the game. And then make the best of it. Don't get upset. You know what's going to happen. See, that's how you set your expectations. Simple as that. And you know what? You still get a little cranky, but not as cranky as you used to get. So you wonder what makes somebody like me a cranky old man. Uh, I got another one for you, but in this one, I guarantee you, if you've gone on any cruise that's happened to you, and that's finding a comfortable chair by the pool, and God forbid trying to find that chair by the pool on a sea day, good luck. It seems to me that people get up at six o'clock in the morning. They take all their stuff and they put it on as close to a chair by the pool as possible, especially if it's a nice day. I mean, it's, it's, it's to the point of ludicrous. One person had a custom made, it was, was professional, a custom made topper for the chair. And it said, these chairs are reserved for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I couldn't believe it. Well, one of the things I do is I watch these chairs. I watch them because I'm way back in the nosebleed section because I couldn't get a chair. I got up at a normal time and had a normal breakfast. I thought I was on vacation. Nobody goes there. They're empty. Now, what do I want to do? I want to become confrontational because I'm cranky. I'm cranky. Are you cranky sometimes? I'm cranky. I want to become confrontational. I want to take their stuff, fold it nice, put it under the chair, put it to the side, give it to somebody that's over there from the cruise line, but I won't because I know what's going to happen. They're going to come back and they're going to get all confrontational with me. And that's what I'm going to remember from my week's investment, confrontation. You see what I mean? But those folks know that. And that's why they do it. It's selfish, it's rude, and it shouldn't happen, but it does. And the people on the cruise ship can't do a darn thing about it because if they do, then they get a bad report. So let me tell you what I do. You're not going to like this because Quite frankly, I have not found a way to solve the chair hog problem, except to book in the VIP section on a cruise ship. Now, most cruise ships give you two options. One is you can book a suite, which is what I normally do at this stage in my life. I understand if you can't afford a suite, I'm not saying you should. But the other alternative is most cruise lines have another section that you can spend just a little bit more and you can be in an adults only section with hot tubs in a pool and stuff like that. It, you should consider it. If this kind of thing bothers you, consider it because it'll make your vacation better. It's worth a little bit of investment. I'm not talking about a suite now. I'm talking about the adults only area. <laughs> that being said, when you're on a luxury cruise ship, there's no problem. I want you to think about luxury for a second and I want you to say to yourself, what makes luxury different? Well, one, it's not as big a ship, smaller ship, there's less people on the ship, there's more crew to passengers, so you have better service and better personalized service. But the entire ship is kind of like being in the VIP section of either a mainstream or in a premium cruise line. Just more room to spread out and it's nicer too however luxury means it's the cost of a small car so i'm trying to accomplish this in such a way that i can actually afford to go on another cruise in a year and you can't do that if you're always going on luxury cruises unless you're bill gates or or somebody that has so much money that you can do whatever the heck you want that is not me and for the most part i don't think it's you either that's what makes me cranky. Pool hogs make me cranky. My third category, it really is a matter of taste, but I, I think most people will agree with what I say. The average to below average food in the main dining room. Now I remember way back when, God, I hate to say it that way, but I do. I remember way back when, 40 years ago, the main dining room was all that. 
or maybe it was just I didn't have much of anything anyway, so anything was better than where I was eating at home, which was my kitchen. But the main dining room food is average to a below average. I kind of put it into the category of a chain restaurant, but kind of a below middle chain restaurant. And if I want to do that, I can do that at home. I'm looking for a different experience. So in order to, in order to help us have a better time on our vacation, if food is important and it's just not the quantity, it's also the quality and the service, then you have two choices. One is, I've said it before, you go into one of the VIP suite sections. It costs more, there's a premium. I agree, not everybody can afford it. I'm not trying to sell you on it. The other way is, you get a specialty dining package and you go to the specialty dining and you'll notice that the food is much better at the specialty dining. You have more of a variety, the service is better, and you pay a little bit for it. Not a lot, a little bit, but it solves the problem. So if you're disappointed with the food on board, that's what you do. Now those specialty dining programs that you have to pay for a little bit, that's usually on a mainstream or a premium cruise line. On luxury cruise lines, they're usually complimentary. But on a luxury cruise line, <laughs> the actual dining room that everybody goes to is the best of the best specialty restaurants on a mainstream or premium. Now remember, on mainstream and premium, if I'm in a suite, I'm in a suites restaurant. They're excellent. That's one of the reasons why I do it. There's many reasons, that's just one. But on luxury, you don't have to worry about it. Just remember, the only thing you have to worry about on a luxury cruise line is paying for it at the end. So remember my goal. I want a luxury experience, all-inclusive, on a mainstream or premium cruise line. The fourth area of things that I really don't like about cruising is inconsistent personalized service. Now, I'm going to give you an example, then I'm going to give you a solution. An example is we went on recently a premium cruise brand. It was premium and we paid extra to go on there. We were in a suite, but it was the suite didn't have its own private pool or anything like that. So it was premium. We went to the regular pool. And of course, as I mentioned it earlier, we couldn't find a lounge chair. We were way back in the nosebleed sections. That's fine. It is the way it is. You get it. You're on vacation. But my wife wanted to go over and get a drink. So she went over to the pool bar and it took her 48 minutes to get a drink. Everybody else got their drink. Because my wife wasn't pushy and didn't grab the guy and say, make me a drink. And she got progressively more and more angry, and that got me upset. The way I fixed that was the way I fixed mostly everything. I went up to one of the servers that was running around the pool and not paying any attention to my wife. I gave him 10 bucks and said, she's thirsty, and she's going to continuously be thirsty. Make sure she's not thirsty anymore, and I'll see you later. I hate that I have to do that, but it's true. And by the way, that's not my solution. That is a solution, but it's not my solution. What I'm looking for, remember... Be real level-headed about this. What I'm looking for, what makes me cranky if I don't get it, is an all-inclusive VIP luxury experience. I want to improve my experience. And the way I've accomplished this is when you're in one of those VIP sections, and again, Haven is one for NCL, and of course the retreat is for celebrity, and the yacht club is for MSC. When you're in one of those areas, those people are senior people. Every member of the crew there are senior people. They earn the right to get in there because their tips are better. When you leave those areas, because it's only a small part of a really large boat, all of a sudden you become a number. So my way of getting what I'm looking for, it might not be what you're looking for, but what I'm looking for is to stay in one of those areas and pay the extra. Because I... I just can't go on vacation eight times a year. But when I do go on vacation, I want it to be right. Just my way. Might not be your way. Please don't be upset with me for saying it this way. I'm just showing you how to accomplish the same thing. Now, if you're on a luxury cruise brand, you have nothing to worry about. If there's one thing that you get on luxury cruise brands is you get personalized service. You pay for it. Remember a small car? You pay for it, but you get it. 
And that's what makes that experience different. Number five on my list of things I really don't like about cruising is the inability to get good reservations for specialty restaurants, shows, and excursions. Here's the solution. First, you got to realize that specialty restaurants, especially on big ships, and now that we have COVID and this social distancing, it'll be even worse. You have to have a reservation. So just for a second, and I'm going to go into the craziness that I do when I organize my cruise in a second. It'll be a further part of this series. But just think about this. You want to eat at a specific time. Let's say you're coming back from an excursion late. Well, you don't want to eat early. You want to take a shower. You want to relax. You want to get a drink. Or there's a show, and the show you want to see is an early show. So that means you have to go to an early dinner. So if you're going to a specialty restaurant, you need to have a reservation. And then you get on board, and you go for the reservation, and they're all gone. Or there's an excursion, one in particular. There's a private island that NCL has, and they have something called a beach villa. It's really expensive, but you know the first thing that sells out? The beach villa. So you want to get in there and you want to get it before it's gone if you want it to enhance your vacation. Shows are the same thing. Now all of a sudden they're production shows. So you need to have a reservation to go. Well, sometimes, especially with social distancing, you might not be able to get in. You might get shut out. I want to eliminate that. That drives me crazy. Now, you know what I'm going to say. So I'm going to go from two perspectives here on premium and mainstream cruises. There is a time when you can book those shows, book those specialty restaurants. You can do it ahead of time online. So find out exactly how many days before it leaves that you can book yourself in. It might be 60 days. It might be 30 days. It might be right after you pay in full. I don't know what your cruise line will say, but you have to research that. And then the moment that you can do it, have it in your head. That's why I use an Excel spreadsheet calendar. Have it in your head. I want to do this on this day. I want to go to this place on that day. And you book it. And it's done. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. You've given it your thought up front. And that's a great strategic plan, and it makes for a much more relaxing vacation. I don't mind doing the work up front. I might have to do the work when I get on there, when I can't get the time that I want to be in the restaurant that I want to be. That makes me angry. It makes me cranky. Now, on a luxury cruise ship, you don't have to worry about it. Well, let me tell you something else. On a mainstream and a premium cruise line, if you're in one of those suites, and I know I keep on going back to this, but you have to understand why you're paying a premium. You have one or two weeks before anybody else on the ship can book those things. So if what you want is the steak restaurant and you want a specific time, real simple. You got two weeks before the rest of the, the ship does it. Now, if there's 4,000 people on the ship and 200 people in the specialty area, those 200 people will have priority for all those reservations. And let me add in here, it could mean spa reservations as well. Wouldn't that be nice? You get everything that you want. Again, luxury, don't have to worry about it. It's a whole different ball of wax. They've got way more people taking care of you because you paid for it. Hope that all makes sense. That goes to my sixth thought. And it's about embarkment and disembarking. One of the things that I learned was when you first start the cruise, and my first cruise was 41 years ago, it was my honeymoon. It was on the Norwegian, now called NCL, but then it was Norwegian SS Norway, the largest cruise ship available at the time. I remember we had an inside cabin. It didn't cost us much of anything. And we had two bunks, it's my honeymoon, and we have two bunks and no windows but we thought it was the best thing that we ever did because it was the only vacation we ever did. That was then. As 24 cruises happened over 41 years, over the last 10 years, we started to stay in suites. Now, suites have evolved. It used to be just a suite. Now it's a suite in a VIP section. They've evolved because the market has evolved and the cruise lines know that on these suites and on these special sections, they make more money per passenger. So. Why not? And they also sell out first. Now that being said, 
prior, like the first time, it took two, two and a half hours to get on board. There was a lot of people on that ship. Well, after a while, it's not quite fun anymore. About your 10th cruise, waiting the two and a half hours, it just takes away from the initial time, the initial day. Now add COVID to that and see what happens. It's going to be specific times. There's going to be hiccups. And quite frankly, not the way I want to start my vacation. So the solutions now are the cruise lines give you the ability to pay a little extra and get on board earlier. But if you're in a suite or you're in a VIP section, you're the first ones on board. And I mean the first ones on board, even over and above their highest priority frequent traveler because you paid the price. So the last time I went on a cruise, it happened to be out of New Orleans and I was in one of those areas. I went there and from the time I got through security, so I'm through security with my bags, to the time that I was in the VIP lounge that's actually at the port and then onto the actual cruise ship was less than 30 minutes. I was done checking in in less than three minutes. That's what you pay for. Not to mention, in most cases, there's a VIP lounge where you can have some ship snacks and some sodas and some coffees before you even get on board. That's what you pay for. Now, disembarkment, it's even easier. When you disembark, you go up to the concierge because you're in one of those areas. They send you down the freight elevator. I actually said to the concierge, I want to leave in five minutes. I came back in five minutes. I was off the ship in less than three minutes, had my bags and in a cab 15 minutes from the time I said I wanted to leave. It's, it's what you're paying for. And you just have to understand if you, what you're looking for is an all inclusive VIP luxury cruise, you can set it up. It's going to cost you more, but you can set it up. Now, don't think that it's any different on a luxury brand. On a luxury brand, there's also classes. So you have people that buy this suite and people that buy that suite, people that buy that suite. Those people have priority. Just like, but the difference is it's a much smaller ship with less people and a higher volume of crew members. So you really don't feel it. It's seamless. They make it that way. That's why you pay the luxury cruise ship premium. I'll tell you one more thing. When I have an excursion, I like to have breakfast, not in my room with room service breakfast, a real live great breakfast. Well, here's the way you do it. Since for an excursion, you can go through the same freight elevator and out of the ship in less than five minutes and not have to stand on those crazy lines going down the stairs. That's why you pay the premium. That's why you pay the premium. Now remember, this is all about getting that first class VIP all inclusive luxury experience. It's not about how can I take a cruise and take a cruise every month for as cheap as possible. That's not what I'm looking at. I don't have the time. It's all about the experience and improving the experience as I see it.